beautiful sorrows of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. Thank you so much for putting this together in this chapter in general. And I also want to thank writers and readers who are in the room. If you can make some noise, if you know that you are a reader, you even find time to write, make some noise now. We have to continue to keep our stories out there, being told and things of that nature. Uh, this has been a great journey. Um, when I say journey, I'm thinking about a couple of different things. Uh, right now I'm celebrating 10 years as an author. And one thing, um, thank you, and one thing with that, it's also focusing on the new phase that I'm in right now. So this um, recent summer, I was able to not just write, but focus on also being a publisher as well. And we've heard that sentiment throughout the evening, or throughout the day, and how important that is for us to also publish our own items. So with that being said, moving forward, um, I wanted to read from uh, my first book, this is my baby. I get real, you know, sentimental about it. But are you guys ready to get untangled? All right. So, Tangled Web of True Love Tales. Let me just give you the backstory. It's about seven women who represent the seven deadly sins, and they each have their own love slash hate tale mixed in and intertwined. So, uh, we know what love it can save the day, and that's really what it's all about. But some obstacles get involved along the way that can kind of make things a little harder to uh, just see through. So with that being said, you'll notice that uh, these seven women, they each have their own her story. I think it's important for women to definitely um, not stay hushed, but talk about the different things that they go through. And um, this is uh, just introducing all seven women in general. So Tangled Web is going to be the first poem I read. It is stuck in a sticky situation. Turned out to be a brilliant work of complication. Just a love triangle spun out of control and the mystery has yet to unfold. Trapped in circles of confusion, confused on what's real or illusion, intertwined in a perplexed state of mind, your way out is getting hard to find. Hmm, but game was pretty tight, not tight enough to win the fight, of the battle that constantly plagues your mind. Strings unattached have now multiplied. Now it's deeper than deep, steeper than steep, the web of lies and deceit, greed and defeat have got you caught up in heat, so much heat. Look who's laughing now. So, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when the joke is really on you? Love is not a game. Love is not a game. But you insist to play. So what you gonna do? What you gonna do when the joke is really on you? The love you once knew was so true, but now, a tangled web is what you're crawling through. Thank you. So when love is not pure, a lot of times, you know, a tangled web is what we find ourselves in. So as far as getting untangled, um, the next poem I'll read is from a character by the name of Sheila. Her story in the book is called Stretch Marks. She deals a lot with um, baby mama drama throughout her life, and it kind of keeps her away from her goals, uh, the goals that she pursues as a person. She says, what year does a woman begin to have secrets? Secrets she can't even share with the closest of kin. Secrets she can't even pass to the ears of friends. The moment her life becomes her own because shame is too much to share. It is the curse that is passed so effortlessly, yet it leaves the longest imprint. It holds you at night the tightest, you wake up smothered in its scent. I remember seeing the look, that same look I have now on my mother's face, a moment impossible to erase, even if I tried. The faraway look, a silent cry, out for why? Why me did this happen to? She sits and rocks the rhythm of despair, the unanswered questions she listens to lies hidden in her consciousness. The defeat of not being able to reach clarity. The suspense kills, and as she exists, she slowly dies a silent, yet assuming death. I watch the burden she carried quite gracefully and begin to wonder, too, what could have kept her so? What secrets could she possibly hold? I knew that with that tight grip, that tight lip, I wasn't getting the answer. 
When you allow a man into your life, one that does not deserve an invite, when you deep down know, yet you still let go, that is a secret you can't tell. That is the secret, the living hell. So that is from Sheila's Her Story. And the last one is coming from Kennedy. Kennedy is um, a firecracker. She is living in a small town and she's very black and proud and she's misunderstood. So as a television producer in a small town, she wants to tell stories that are important to her um, demographic, but she finds herself in a tangled web instead. Her story is Get With The Program. It's the ill-advised, televised suicide. They are just waiting, waiting on us, finally to kill ourselves. They are just waiting, amused at our confused souls because souls of black folk ain't the same no more. We ain't close. We are finally to the edge. They don't have to watch us jump. They can turn their heads. And they laugh as they walk away, knowing we are voluntarily going downhill. How does it feel to watch someone die slowly? They don't even cry because they don't even know they are suffering. Yeah, they should. There is so much misunderstood, so much baggage from the hood of hoods. Sister, brother, mother, and father. The hoods. Loyalty to what? Loyalty to who? The message just won't simply get through. Less than a picture perfect view. Changing the channel just won't do. There is a dead air on every station you come to. What will the outdated antenna do? TV guide can't direct you. Adjust your ears. The static will drown out the tears that have been cried for many years. But those who ignored or by those who ignored their fears and lived the impossible dream to create what is on screen. Adjust your eyesight. It's not your screen of black and white. People are doing more than Nick at night. Nobody wants to cut uncut. All they want to do is fight off their piece of the action. Chasing their own satisfaction. No schoolhouse rock to rerun. Learning on Saturday can't be fun. Replace those thoughts with what's on screen. Behind the scenes, there are not enough queens. Relaying messages and replaying messages that matter to us. Seeing is believing that's what's happening to us. More than a 48 hours mystery, this problem has been going on for centuries. Such vacancy. Love doesn't live here anymore. The saddest question is, did it ever though? We need some law and order, but what we keep getting is, I'm not gonna cuss, but it says that, please. There ain't much glory in one life to live. The young is more than restless. The girls are far from golden. The family can't stop feuding and it's putting us all in jeopardy. Or so to speak, the question remains, what is so entertaining about black? So that is coming from Kennedy. And uh, the last one is coming from a doctor who pretty much puts a lot of things together for these ladies. A lot of times in our communities, there's a stigma with getting help when you've gone through trauma and things of that nature. And there is one character who pretty much finds a way to help people not only in her office, but also online. And her name is Dr. Lynn. Uh, so Dr. Lynn's, um, I'm trying to get to it, I didn't mark it. Her poem is called, uh, well really her, her, her story is called PH Depressed, but her, uh, poem is called Recapture. Once there was a love so strong, no whipping could burn it. Once there was a passion so deep, no soul could be sold. Treachery couldn't sell out this love, for faith kept it above the danger. Once relentless, now senseless love. Did it run away too, or did it make it through the underground passage? Or was it scattered to never be heard? of again. 
Now in the new broken promised land where sandwiches are filled with poison, it's up to you to name it, reclaim it, have faith in it again. Recapture the love, share what it is, and has always been within. Thank you. I think I love Kennedy, the television producer, and I think that's characters about me. So we're making a movie, right? Are we working on that? Are we speaking that into existence? All right, so any questions for McCall? Um, can you just give us a brief synopsis of the other characters that you didn't mention? The other characters will be the greedy character, Dion Duvall is the one at the top right. Uh, she's pretty much a boss, but a lot of times she finds that there's an ugly side to being beautiful. Um, at the bottom right, we have Kyla. She's actually the twin sister to Kennedy, who's a TV producer. She has um, kind of like a picket fence life and um, pretty much the preacher's wife, and she has uh, some interior, exterior uh, battles going on. And Nadia on the top left, she actually is running for her life, and she is trying to restart a new life, but her past keeps, you know, catching up with her. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Hi, out of your seven characters, which one do you resonate with the most or which one is your favorite and why? Oh wow, that's hard. I, I think there's a little piece of me in all of them, but I know that the writer character, which is Autumn, I didn't mention her, but she's the nucleus of the group. Uh, she's a free spirit and she's, she's in the center of the uh, picture. I can relate to her just because she's writing a book during the time of the story. So I would not say I can, you know, say that they're based on me, but I did take pieces of my uh, passion for writing as well as the jobs I've had. I've had several jobs in my lifetime. <laughs> can you take one more question? Yeah. All right, thank you so, thank much. You so much. Please make sure to stop our hearts have